So we're uh, actually two minutes into the event already. So uh, <laughs> oh, no. kickoff has happened. Uh, do you know how many Cloud Agathons have there been before this one? One. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we have huge heritage. Uh, we have a proud history of, of events happened already. But uh, yeah, how many uh, were you at the first one? Whoa, great turnout. Uh, returning visitors. Uh, but uh, but yeah, a little bit about why actually we wanted to make Cloud Again happen. Uh, for once, uh, there are conferences and talks and you can go to them and uh, listen to people doing stuff. Uh, but uh, we here felt that uh, for once the, they were a little bit uh, like superficial. So uh, you go there, you learn about the framework X or technology Y, uh, but uh, they were okay. But now I, I can read that on, on their homepage, so a uh, little bit more in-depth uh, is what we're actually aiming here for. Uh, so Cloud Agedon is from, uh, from actual engineers or people in, deeply involved in the engineering organizations uh, and it's for engineers. So people doing the heavy lifting, working in the field, actually dealing with the problems. So if, you, if you're in a... Uh, a first uh, semester IT student, then some of this stuff might be a little bit confusing for you. But, uh, but then again, it will be a lot uh, easier for you in the future. Uh, so it's a little bit uh, background here yeah, from, uh, from what, what Cloud Academy should be, what uh, we'll see to be. So it, uh, it's a semi-annual event. Uh, we have it uh, twice a month with a huge heritage, remember? Uh, and today uh, we have here uh, two speakers. So the first will be uh, Nikita uh, from Plumber, uh, who actually uh, quite recently got uh, got promoted there to <laughs> <laughs> to the CTO position. So big hand for Nikita! Uh, congratulations! And uh, how many of you have heard of Docker? What's Docker? almost everybody. How many of you actually deal with software that runs in production on Docker? Well, more than I've seen at uh, different various other places. But uh, Nikita will talk about what, uh, what their experience with it is and, uh, and talk about the good and the bad stuff a little bit. Uh, one more thing actually, what I forgot to mention about Cloud Agedan is uh, at conferences, at talks, at uh, meetups, people often talk about stuff that they're great about. <coughs> they did that and this is awesome, and they, they did the other one and this was awesome as well. But uh, if you remember the first event, then uh, here actually we had uh, some talks about stuff that we fucked up, stuff that uh, is not that easy, uh, and things that you shouldn't do. So, uh, you know, in, when searching for, uh, for speakers, for Cloud Together, and we also aim at uh, what are the things that you're not ashamed to talk of and uh, others should learn from. So there's that uh, aspect of, of the event as well. And the second talk will be given by Marty Darema, who is uh, an infrastructure wizard here at, uh, at Fortumo, and he will talk about uh, structured logging. Who knows what, the, what that is? less people that know Docker, uh, but Martin will talk about uh, what, what it is, about the definition and uh, how we tackled it here in, in Fortumon. But without further ado, uh, I would uh, like to invite uh, Nikita here and uh, give it up. Good evening. So I like your choice of word, heritage, no, not legacy. <laughs> not the first time. Uh, so, uh, Nikita, I am common Estonian plumber, um, one of the founders, but today I will talk about somewhat unrelated topic. So I have seen that many of you have heard about Docker. How many of you actually know what Docker is and how it works? Okay, good. Then my first three slides will be of use as well. So I will talk a little bit about uh, what the Docker is and unfortunately I cannot talk about how we fuck things up because that went very well in Plumber. So I will talk only about good experience 
Uh, and the point of my talk will be exactly why uh, have we started to look at the docker, why sh have we started trying and using it, and where did it bring us during the last two years. So what, what docker is, essentially, docker is a way to have a very small and lightweight virtual machines, essentially. That's very simplistic view, but you, you can package in one package uh, an operation system, libraries, your product, configuration files, etc., etc., everything that you need to run your application. So not only jar file or Ruby jam, but everything, the whole environment that you can use. So you have image, which is virtual machine, and then you can run containers or instances of those images whenever you like. So that looks like that, that you have some command line tools on your machine, on your server, you build in some way, I will not dive into how to exactly use Docker to today, so you build those images, you put everything that you need in order to run your application anywhere you like into that Docker image, then you push that image into some kind of registry. That registry can be your, on your local machine, it can be in your intranet, it can be Artifactor, which is private for you, it can be Docker Hub, which is publicly accessible whenever you like. And after that, you can, on any other machine, uh, you can pull that images and then run containers out of that. So what does it, what does it really mean? It means that, uh, first of all, the easiest way to start using Docker and understand why should I really care is uh, just the easy way to run some pre-packaged software. For example, if you want to install Nginx or, or Apache Pro proxy on your machine, you can go to Aptitude or to, or to Homebrew or to, well, God forbid, Windows App Store, and you can download, you can install, and then you want to uninstall it, and then you tr try to track down every file that the Aptitude have installed on the machine. ETK, user, var, logs files, whatever. <coughs> so Docker allows you with just one command, install the needed package, and after that, very easy, remove that without any trace from, from your machine. So throw away installations, and proof of concept and ad hoc installations are very easy with Docker. Or for example, I wanted to try new versions of SonarCube, which needs uh, SonarCube, it, ne it needs some plugins, it needs database, and it needs Postgres da da database we use in our daily life, My MySQL. So I had to install new database, I had to, to install and somehow configure configure that Sonar Cube. Instead of that, I just said Docker Compose run Sonar Cube. That's it. It downloaded three images, it started three different containers, da database, Sonar Cube, whatnot. So very easy to run and then throw away. Uh, uh, in, in, in addition, it the one of the main benefits of Docker is that it runs that product or that package in totally isolated environments inside your, your machine. So you can have multiple instances, multiple containers from the same image running simultaneously on your machine without any interference between each other. So the, uh, it's, it's not that uh, important during development but uh, during pr production, you can uh, scale your application not only horizontally and not vertically, but diagonally, which means that you can have one huge machine, but still run in multiple instances of the same software on that machine. So it's 
vertically because it's a big machine, but that's horizontally because it's a multiple instance. I have just invented the term. Uh, <laughs> <that> diagonal scale. <laughs> scale. <laughs> so that gives you, among other things, an uh, easy way, first of all, to run su simultaneously different versions of your application. So, for example, if you're trying to debug uh, the, the latest Jira ticket, you can run the previous version of your software or the current version of your software at the same time on your development machine and just compare how they behave. And they, they will not interfere with each other. Uh, the only um, sm well important point which uh, has bitten us a couple of times at the beginning is that exactly as Amazon Cloud Machine several year, years ago, Docker containers are ephemeral, which means uh, when your software runs in that container and then you kill that container, you stop and remove that container, everything that has happened inside the container is gone. So every file that you have written or changed, all dat database files and tables and, and records are gone. <coughs> So if you want to persist data between containers, then you have to take care of that separately. You can mount folders, you can use volumes. This talk is not about how to use Docker. This talk is about why should you use Docker. How to use Docker, that plenty of talks and blog posts about that. So why should you use Docker? And why have we started to think about Docker? So, I don't know if you know what Plumber is or what Plumber plum, plum is not. Essentially, it's a small piece of software, quite useful but small, that you install some piece of, piece of software on, on your production environment that will communicate with our backend server, it will collect some metrics from your environment and we will tell you why your software is, why your software is slow and fails me. <laughs> uh, so we try to explain why your end users suffer from your work. <coughs> and so uh, two years ago, uh, that backend part that we run to collect data to accept collected data and to communicate with our end users to show you what's going on inside your software looked like more or less like that. We had one JT instance which ran some smallish WAR file and we had one MySQL database. Quite easy. Nothing kind of complex. Then two years ago we have started changing our architecture and preparing for a new, bigger and brighter and shinier release. And in two years from this, we came to this. Microservices for the win. So now we have like, <coughs> I already forgot, 12 to 14 different JVM instances running different services. And that's more or less okay. You can run that in your pro pro production just on your bare, uh, bare servers, no problems. But we have one problem, one smallish problem. We have to ship all that to, on, to our clients as well. Some clients, like banks, telecoms, insurance company, somehow don't like to send the data from their production somewhere into the internet for some reason. I don't understand why, what, what could go wrong. But they prefer to run everything on site. So now imagine that you, as a developer, have to write the installation manual for that. What can, what can go wrong? So, uh, and we have very fresh and painful memories about all the times that uh, system administrators of our clients installed the wrong version of MySQL here, or wrong version of Java. 
Now imagine what, what would that mean. Wrong version of Zookeeper, wrong, wrong version of MySQL, wrong version of, Ka of Kafka. Kafka, I forgot to configure that where the Kafka files should locate because by default they are located in slash tmp folder, so one restart and all your data is gone. So we decided, no, 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 we don't want that, so we put, that ev we put everything into one text of file. So instead of that, we ship to our clients now this one text file. Well, not text, it's the YUML file, but anyway. By the way, who can understand me why YUML is superset of JSON? I will be very great, great, great. So it doesn't look like JSON to me. Anyway, uh, we ship that one text, text file to our clients. And that's it. We do require, of course, that on your production you have to have installed Docker and Docker Compose. So they do have to install two things. Docker and Docker Co Compose. Docker is, is quite easy. It's only like six or seven steps. Docker official ma manual. Docker Compose is even simpler. Only two steps involving curling the application on your machine. Which is strange, but anyway. So it's much easier. Really easy to, to, to install. Our clients now have only one shell file, launch, that will download and install everything. And that file is two lines, docker compose, pull docker compose up. Very easy. Extremely easy to upgrade. Because in order to upgrade the installation consisting of 14 d d different containers, we just need to download the new version of that file where we have all those versions uh, written and that's it. Again, Docker Compose will take, every, will take care about detecting, aha, uh -huh, now we have the changed description of the environment comparing to the actually running environment. It will download the correct versions of uh, images, it will download new services because during those two years we have several t several new releases adding new co co containers to that installation. But for, for the end users it's completely transparent. They have one file which is extremely easy and extremely easy to maintain for us. And the next be benefit, well, if you package your whole runtime environment into Docker image, that means that you can easily test the exact environment that will be running on your client's production site. What does it mean? How do we do that? It means that as soon as you have that packaged uh, containers, images, compose file that you ship to, end, to your end users, you can run exactly same images, exactly same containers with exactly the same configuration in your production, in your SaaS environment, software and service. So on our side, we run exactly the same. The next logical step, of course, now we run exactly the same package, exactly the same environment on our staging environment before we put that into production. The next step, of course, is, okay, I have 14 containers here. Now I'm a developer which has, which has to implement a new feature in one of them. But they communicate with each other. They, they do require each other from time to time. So how do I ensure that my changes will still continue to work with all those other uh, microservices? And half of them communicate with each other through Kafka, so totally asynchronous. So we pipe data here, somebody pulled the data from here. So developers 
run exactly the same containers, exactly the same images that we will ship to our end users on their local developer machines. Okay, to run all that, you need somewhat 16 gigabytes of RAM on, on your developer ma machine, unless you are willing to tweak and tune that a little bit. But anyway, you can run all that you need, or at least <coughs> all the required parts from your real production environment on your machine. Um, how does it work? Uh, so every microservice, every those that one single module that, that you saw, it has a Docker file which essentially description how should I build that runtime environment, that production environment. How should I build it? Build it. What operation system do do I need? What packages do I need? Do I need curl or do I, do I need firewall rules on your machine? Uh, what what and where should I install on that environment to how my package is? Okay, we use, in most cases, we use a, 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 sim, a simple Spring Boot application, so you just one jar file. But we have Kafka, we have Zookeeper, we have Docker, which essentially you have to put several different files into several correct locations. That all is scripted in that Docker file, which is part of the source code of the, of the module, which means that every time you change your installation, you change that file, so you, every time you have the correct environment for your specific version of the code. So every version that we build has compatible code to run and environment where, where to run that code. Okay, then when you push that to default branch, you have Jenkins that will build that Docker image, push that into Artifactory, then uh, deploy that to test environment, then nightly build, will run some tests on that, will push that into our environment, then it after some time it will push that to our <coughs> another environment, some kind of rolling restart, a rolling rollout, and then in a couple of days we see that everything works fine on, on our environment, we ship the same pre-built images to our clients. So the main be benefit here that we saw is that now, comparing to what we had three years ago, we can be absolutely sure that First, we have working versions and working environments of our software that we ship and we, we are absolutely sure that our end users cannot, really cannot, they try, but they cannot fuck up installation and they cannot fuck up upgrade. After that, when, when it runs, they can do strange things restart arbitrary containers for no reasons, delete some files for no reason, but that's their problem. Installation and upgrade is flawless because it is the exactly same procedure is tested every day in our environment. Um, hmm? So, um, as I said, there is there is really no nothing to tell you about what went wrong. Because if we if we talk about was that a good idea to take Docker and to put our whole pro product and server side installation uh, into Docker, I think the answer is completely yes. I don't remember I don't remember currently during those two years when we had problems because of Docker. Ron can maybe correct me. Uh, no, Docker, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Oh, actually customers have installed long version of Docker. <laughs> 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 exactly. Uh, 
By the way, that's a very, that's a very good point. Uh, if you compare again this and this, I cannot say that Docker has decreased problems comparing to this. No, the same amount of problems. Ten times more complex architecture, more, com more complicated environment, but the same amount of problems. Because here we had wrong version of MySQL, wrong version of Java, sometimes wrong version of Jetty. Same pro pro problem here, wrong version of operation system, wrong version of Docker, wrong version of Docker Compose, but that's it. You can scale the complexity of your architecture, you can scale the complexity of your deployment without scaling up your problems and without scaling up your, your support team. That's. Um, I would like to point one, uh, one, one point here, easy service di discovery. If you, if you remember, I stressed very much that, you have the, that we have the exact same configuration on our environment, in our production, and in client pro production. Because when, uh, when you look at those 15 or 14 co containers, they have to communicate with each other. For that, they have to know how to find each other. <coughs> and with Docker, we just have names on those containers. You have DB, you have Kafka, you have Zookeeper. And that doesn't change between environments. They will have the di different IPs. They will have probably the di different ports on different machines, on different environments. Because, for example, in our, uh, in, in our environment, we have both co-located environment when we have the whole, whole deployment running on the single machine, and we have distributed environment where we have every single microservice on a separate machine and then multiple copies. But the configuration oftentimes is the same. You have just DB, use DB uh, URL, that's it. And you can configure Docker that, okay, DB is there. In the simplest case, like on, on the single machine, it's just, well, here, here is the container and Docker infrastructure will take care of that. In the more complex case, you have to tell, okay, DB results to that DNS or that IP format. The point being, service d discovery here is much, much simpler. You, you don't need to, to change that from environment to environment. The same configuration on your local machine, the same configuration in your testing, in your staging, in production, on the client side. You cannot fuck up the configuration. Uh, reuse and, uh, and, and isolation, yes, we sometimes run the multiple co copies of the same product on the same machine. And I forgot to, to mention one more thing is that whenever, when you, when you can run your production environment on the developer machine, that the next logical step is that you can run, you can start and stop your production environment automatically during your automated tests. Because, for example, if you, if you take one of the microservices that have to communicate with other microservices and you want to run the integration test which really communicate with the actual instances of database, the actual instance of Kafka, for, for example. Now, you can run your, you can write your automated, automated test, and test will start that container, run your test, stop container, on your developer machine. Uh, and nowadays, it's even more, it's even easier if you haven't heard about test containers, then do yourself a favor, Google it, 
uh, test containers is very very easy way to run your Docker container during your unit test, no, integration test, unit test, integration test. So, one single decision to let's try to put our complex architecture or com complex deployment into Docker to simplify the installation to our end users had in fact rippling effects on our whole development and deployment process. From the uh, client environment, it moved to our production, then it moved to our test, then it moved to, to our Jenkins, then it moved to our developer machine, and then it moved to our automated tests. Now we run it everywhere. Looks like, well, too good to be true, what the fuck do you selling me? But, well, really, the only negative thing that I can say about Docker that it, it really, for example, you, you can he reuse your images, but if you're running 15 containers on your single machine, that means that you have to, have, you have to download those 15 images and they all will have the JDK, they all will have your operation system. Okay, Docker will optimize that it will reuse layers, but all in all, the bandwidth and disk space usage will be better. <coughs> And yeah, some clients, they do know how to run Java or how to run Linux services. Now they have, to, well, now they curse us because they, now I need to learn do Docker. Oh, I'm 45 years old, so why do I need to learn Docker now, those hipsters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now you can put anything you like into that, that Docker. You can run your Node.js application in that Docker, your Ruby, PHP, Python, whatever you like, and your clients will still need to learn only Docker, not how to not how to rest with it, not not, not modules or Ruby gems or aptitude. So that essentially was it from me. I will be here. If you have any questions, then now may be a good st time to start. And we can kind of continue later on. Thank you. Notification. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, what type of Docker register you are using? Uh, we use for our internal needs uh, Artifactory Cloud. Okay. And when we ship that to our uh, end users, we push that to JFrog Bintray. How? Bintray. Bintray? Bintray. Okay, Bintray. Bintray, that's actually well, how they advertise mm -hmm. that the universal binary repository. You can push the everything, jar files, RubyGem, Node.js models, Docker okay. images, everything you like, and then download that way. I think we had another question back there. Uh, stupid one. Uh, I think it will run Kafka in Docker. Oh, that's complicated. <laughs> That's Kafka. No. Uh, well, to run Kafka in Docker is very easy. To, to, co to communicate with Kafka in Docker, that's complicated. Uh, essentially, you have to know in advance how will you call the, the, that Kafka. So Kafka is the single, uh, the single component uh, infrastructure that have currently have to have the fixed name. At least one name which is fixed and known in advance. We can talk about that. That that's the main pain po po point. Yes, Kafka in Docker that is complicated. Any more questions? How do you do updates without downtime? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like well, a couple of minutes max. It's possible. Or yeah. It it. It is currently currently we have downtime like one to million yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand it is like they docker everything down and then docker everything up, but it's more or less. <laughs> yeah. No, well, nobody ca complains so so far. So yeah, uh, Nikita will be here uh, right now uh, for the break that we'll have, and uh, and feel free to.
have the networking break, which we'll have at, uh, after the event, uh, and, and uh, ask your, all of your questions then as well. But right now, get some air, uh, yeah. get some pizza, get some beer, lemonade, and uh, give another big hand for Nikita.